What's up, everybody? Justin here, bringing you another poorly reviewed beer from Schmaltz Brewing Company in Clifton Park, New York. Uh, part of their Star Trek series, this is Klingon Imperial Porter. As I said, part of their Star Trek series that they began last year in celebration of uh, the 50th anniversary of the uh, debut of the original Star Trek series in 1966. Had a few of the beers under the series before. Some were uh, really good. Some were uh, just okay. And we'll uh, we'll see how this Imperial Porter is. Um, notes from the brewery. Raise a goblet of Klingon Imperial Porter to the strongest warriors in the galaxy. Discover the ruby undertones that pay homage to Klingon blood wine and fallen warriors who hold honor above life. There is no honor in attacking the weak, so take pleasure in besieging the 7.3% ABV Imperial Porter. But like this mighty elixir, Klingons also have a sweet side. Witness the wedding ritual where the gods forge two hearts so strong that once joined together they cannot be opposed. Just ignore the part of the ceremony where the groom swings his batleth at the bride. A Klingon proverb states death is an experience best shared, and so is the first Star Trek limited release of 2017. Kapla. Kapla is kind of Klingon for good luck, best wishes, so forth. Uh, malt used, specialty two row, Vienna, melanoid and crystal, honey and pale chocolate. Hops used, Columbus and Vanguard. Okay. So I would dare say it's it's much lighter than expected. Uh, to me, I think with the 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 glare and just from the camera, it's a little hard to see. But it is kind of that ruby color. I I would of course expect it to be uh, much darker as an imperial porter, and it is perfectly see through. But yeah, it's it's like a, a ruby color, kind of almost uh, held up to the light. We're getting like a burnt orange, a little darker than iced tea, not quite iced tea, but uh, yeah, very much on the, the red orange side. Uh, surprisingly so, of course, I think for a, an Imperial Porter, as I said. Um, let's go ahead and give it a try. Mm-hmm. So despite the color, there certainly are... Uh, plenty of uh, porter st porter type uh, undertones and flavor notes. Definitely getting some chocolate. And a fair amount of sweetness overall. Which I would think is not surprising given the the um, the, uh, the malts the ingredients listed in the malt uh, section. Um, honey, pale chocolate, so forth. There's also, at, kind of towards the very end, the, the, the sweet, <coughs> excuse me, the sweetness is pretty prevalent overall. Towards the end, there's a bit of a, a bitter, a bitter roast note, maybe a bitter chocolate note as well. Yeah, kind of both to be honest. Um, but there's a little bit of roastiness, but uh, but so yeah, some kind of some just some bitter notes there towards the end, and they really carry through into the aftertaste. I would just kind of say that, like uh, body wise, and I'm just gonna kind of address a a general makeup kind of a situation. It's overall much lighter than I expected. The, the color we talked about uh, initially, and again, it is, it looks much more like a, a red ale or a dark amber, or maybe like a, a darker IPA. It does not look, it does not look, look like your traditional uh, porter or imperial porter in terms of color. I expected a little bit more of an, uh, a little bit higher ABV only quote unquote only 7.3 but of course i think we see these kinds of styles imperial porters imperial stouts and so forth all these imperial style imperial versions of styles 
and they tend to be uh, really ramped up in the uh, the alcohol department. And to me, 7.3 is relatively it's, it's it's high overall. It's relatively low for the style. And then just body wise, it's it's maybe a medium, but it's not as heavy as I was expecting. So that was a bit of a surprise for me. It it kind of almost plays more like a, a red ale than a, a real, like, robust porter. Maybe just the... the slight ramping up of the ABV took a lot of the body out of it, but it's, it's, not, an, it's not an unenjoyable beer. Frankly, it tastes... It tastes very good, but it's just a surprising drinking experience to me. Frankly, I don't even know if I'm doing it uh, justice in terms of a an overall description. Again, there's a little bit of just kind of dark beer notes there, but there's it it, it it's certainly a porter, but if it just feels like on the description, it could almost be again like a a, a really robust red ale. Or brown ale, or a, I don't know, imperial amber, <laughs> something like that. It's just, it's an enjoyable beer, but I just, it's not quite, certainly not what I was expecting. But, um, nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with things being different. I am certainly going to drink the rest of it, so maybe that's the, that's the bottom line. Um, I find it enjoyable, and I am going to drink the rest of it. So maybe... Again, if I'm not doing a great uh, a great job of the, des- the description, let's just leave it at that. Eminently quaffable, eminently enjoyable. So that is it. That's the uh, the Klingon Imperial Porter, the Star Trek series from Schmaltz, and that is it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. You can find all my reviews, both video and written, along with news commentary and more, at poorlyreviewedbeer.com. Also, check out PRB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. You'll find those links and usernames in the description below. And if you're so inclined, please like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Maybe like some of the other ones. Those reviews are a lot better than this one. Uh, Thanks for watching. I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.